This is an introductory chemistry experiment looking at the solubility of some solids in two solvents, water and cyclohexane. So the solids that we've got from left to right, we've got sodium chloride, we've got some iodine, we have sulfur, we have calcium carbonate, and we've got copper to sulfate. So we'll be looking at the solubility of all those five materials in water, first in these tubes, and then cyclohexane in these tubes over here. So let's start with the water. Water is a polar solvent and we've already got some of the sodium chloride in the tube but let's have a look, confirm what it looks like as a material. We've got the black background in case we need to put some so there's the sodium chloride, generous spatula measure and another one. It's a white crystalline solid which you may be able to pick up on the camera there but if you can't there you should be able to do so against the black background. So that's the sodium chloride. Here's the tube that we've got and we've got a small amount of sodium chloride there. Let's have a look what happens when we introduce some water into there. You can probably predict the result. So some water. The sodium chloride is already dissolving, disappearing, and if we give it a shake, yes, let's move that out of the way. You can see that that solid has in fact gone. It's disappeared, it's dissolved. So sodium chloride, soluble in water. What about our second substance, which is iodine? Now, this is quite a hazardous material. And I will show it to you. Um, this is resublimed iodine, it says. And if we take some of the iodine, you can see that it's a dark grey solid, sometimes with a little purplish sheen, and it vaporises rather easily, and one doesn't want to breathe in that vapour. So we'll put that back in the bottle. That's the iodine. And if you examine the tubes with the iodine in, you can already see that those have already got the stoppers in. Right, is iodine soluble in water? Well, same test as we saw before. Here's the iodine. You can probably pick it up against my fingers. You can see that some of it's come around there. It's a dark orange-brown vapour there we're seeing. In goes some water. Again, give it a shake. And we're not seeing any appreciable solubility there. The lump of iodine is still there in the back. It's going to show up better against the white background at the bottom. That might change with time, but uh, not so much solubility for the iodine. On with the next one. The next substance we've got is sulphur in the tube there. Let's quickly have a look at the sulphur. This is a bright yellow solid that you may be familiar with. We take out some sulphur, there we are, onto the watch glass and we've got a small quantity of that solid in the tube here, ready to go. So that's our sulphur. Sulphur is a molecular material like the iodine and here we've got some in the tube. Let's add water and look, can you see the sulphur is floating at the surface? It doesn't want to uh, get wet, it seems to be repelling the water and it's floating on the surface of the water as it's being squirted into the tube there. So the sulphur is now near the top mostly. Some of it is sunk to the bottom. We can't really see any dissolving. But uh, let's give it a quick shake, just knocking the container of calcium carbonate there. So there's the sulphur. As we suspected, it's just 
suspended in the water there, a lot around the surface in the bubbles, it doesn't look as though it's dissolving in water. So that's sulphur. On to the next solid. And we've got calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate, limestone. Uh, very often it, limestone is made of calcium carbonate. Uh, this is a chemical compound, CaCO3. It's an ionic material. This is a white crystalline solid. And we take a sample. So not a hazardous material, this one. Uh, used to fortify various foods and in vitamin supplements. So that's calcium carbonate. And let's have a look at the solubility of calcium carbonate in water in the test that we've gone here. So there it is in the tube. Hope you can see it. And goes to water. The water appears to have gone cloudy. And that doesn't mean that it's dissolved, of course, that just means it's dispersed as a fine solid. If we give it a shake, do we get a clear solution? No. So, other than the sodium chloride, the only substance that we've got soluble in water so far has been our first one, the sodium chloride, the salt. Well, the last one that we've got to put on show is copper sulfate, the blue one. This is hydrated copper sulfate. If you're familiar with this from lab experiments, so a blue, pale blue crystalline material. And let's have a look at the solubility of copper sulfate. So I'm in the tube here in water. So in goes the water. And indeterminate, the water is taking on a slight blue coloration. It's hard to pick up there, but we can still see some of the blue material in the bottom of the tube there. Let's give it a shake. Yeah, it looks as though that's disappearing. It hasn't all gone. So this one looks as though it might dissolve. And yes, the solid copper sulfate has dissolved in the water producing a pale blue solution there might pick it up there against the background there's a tiny little bit of solid down left in the bottom but this one is soluble in water so that's the solubility of our materials in water sodium chloride and copper sulfate soluble iodine sulfur and calcium carbonate insoluble well our second liquid our second solvent is this one. This is cyclohexane. This is a so-called non-polar solvent, unlike water, which is a polar solvent. Um, and if we get a pipette and introduce some into a test tube, you'll be able to look at the solvent. So it's a colourless liquid. It has a sort of petrol-like organic smell. Let's just put a bung in that so we don't have to breathe it in. That's the solvent that we're using here. It's this cyclohexane, a non-polar solvent. Right, we're going to have a look at the same substances from left to right here to see if they're soluble in cyclohexane. So first, we've got our sodium chloride in the bottom of the tube there. Let's have a look if sodium chloride is soluble in cyclohexane. In we put some cyclohexane. And still sitting at the bottom of the tube there, you might be able to pick it up there. It's gone translucent um, with the liquid on top of it, but the solid is still there. Let's give it a shake. Now, difficult to see on camera, it looks like sugar at the bottom of a cup of hot water or tea. It's still there, it's not dissolving, uh, it's sinking down, but this, the sodium chloride is still there. And it's, as I say, it's become translucent, but it's not, no evidence of it dissolving there in that small amount. So sodium chloride, 
not soluble in cyclohexane. What about our second one, the iodine, the molecular material? So we look at iodine. Get this one ready. So here's the top coming off. Here's the cyclohexane. And you may be able to detect already that the cyclohexane has turned pinky purple. So that's clear evidence from the colour of the iodine, the molecular solid, dissolving in cyclohexane. What about sulphur? The next one, this was the bright yellow solid there. Still see it? There's some solid. Let's add some cyclohexane to that one. That's a little more. Well, so far, indeterminate in that we've added the cyclohexane. We can still see the yellow material at the bottom, as we saw with the sodium chloride. But what's going to happen if we shake this material up? Well, still got some solid there, but far less than we had a few seconds ago. So if we keep shaking, yes, you can see that the amount of solid is indeed shrinking, getting smaller. So it looks as though sulphur is soluble in cyclohexane. So there we are, most of that sulphur has dissolved. What about the calcium carbonate? This was the white powder, this was insoluble in water, an ionic material, not a molecular material. Let's add some cyclohexane to calcium carbonate. Once more you may be able to detect that the powder has remained at the bottom of the tube there. Can you see it? Away. And we need to give that a shake to see what happens. So calcium carbonate in cyclohexane. Cloudy. It's dispersed again. Is it dissolving? Well, it's certainly dispersed, broken up as a fine powder. But unlike the sulphur, I wouldn't say if you compare them side by side the calcium carbonate is still there. It's moving around at the bottom. It's a fine powder. There it is. But the sulphur's gone. So the comparison there is a good one. The calcium carbonate insoluble in cyclohexane. What about our copper sulphate? The pale blue crystals there. Let's have a look at the solubility of copper sulphate. Cyclohexane. So here's the cyclohexane. In it goes. Now the copper sulfate did dissolve in water. It's an ionic solid. Produced a pale blue solution. And there it is at the bottom of the cyclohexane. We need to put the top on and give it a shake. Any evidence of dissolving? Well, there's still crystals at the bottom there. Still there. Well, we need to compare it to the copper sulphate in water. So, on the left, it's the copper sulphate has disappeared from the bottom there. In the cyclohexane, it's still there at the bottom. And you should be able to detect that the one on the left hand side is slightly pale blue, but the one on the right hand side in the cyclohexane is not showing any blue coloration. So copper sulphate insoluble in cyclohexane. Well, the last thing I want to do is to come back to the iodine in water. Iodine in water has produced a very pale yellow coloration there. So that indicates that the iodine is slightly soluble in water 
but they're purple, very soluble in cyclohexane. But hang on, you might be thinking you use iodine as an antiseptic. And the trick that they use there is to not dissolve the iodine in water, but very often to dissolve iodine in potassium iodide solution. So we've got some potassium iodide solution here. And if we take some of that solution and we again add it to our iodine here in the tube and it goes and you might be able to detect already an increasing intensity of the yellow coloration just going to add a few drops more of the potassium iodide let's give that a shake this is iodine in potassium iodide so potassium iodide dissolved in water an aqueous solution and if we shake that with our iodine solid you can see that it is in fact dissolving let's remove those labels so iodine in water, iodine in potassium iodide, and iodine in cyclohexane. Of course, you're familiar with iodine solutions being a dark brown solution. There's some iodine in potassium iodide that we use in the laboratory for starch testing. And here's some tincture of iodine. This is dissolved in ethanol and water. This is an antiseptic kind of solution. So solubility of five solids in water and in cyclohexane and in the case of the iodine at the end solubility in potassium iodide solution is there a pattern can you explain the solubility or the differences in solubility of the materials